My name is John Keeler Bibb. I am your new Young Farmer and Rancher Committee Chair for 2013. I have the unique privilege of introducing this, uh, this new award, Excellence in Agriculture. The, um, this award recognizes individuals and couples who are actively contributing and growing through their involvement in Farm Bureau and agriculture. Participants in this competition do not earn a majority of their income uh, directly farm related, but they are very involved and are equally concerned about the issues facing agriculture as any farmer. Please turn your attention to the screen as we meet this year's contestants. The Farm Bureau Excellence in Agriculture Award Program is designed to recognize young farmers and ranchers who do not have a majority of their income subject to normal production risks. Participants are judged on their involvement in agriculture, leadership ability, and participation in Farm Bureau and other organizations. Our first nominees are Rob and Shauna Taylor from Cahoma County. Rob is the Assistant Vice President of the Cleveland Branch of the Mississippi Land Bank. We do a little bit of everything for the farmer, anything from crop loans, production lending, to equipment uh, type loans, to uh, financing land purchases. So we, we run the gamut of uh, agricultural lending from start to finish. We try to sit down and, and look at the finances of the farm and kind of be a financial advisor more than just a lender or a banker for our farmers. We try to be more on the financial advising end. Uh, give them some ideas of what's going to make them more profitable um, and that, that just works great for both parties. Having a personal relationship with his customers allows Rob to help them be successful. Maybe it's a young guy that's starting out that doesn't need that high expenditure right off the bat and we try to sit down with them and work through them and say this is probably not the best idea. On the flip side of that, you know, we, we have some guys that are very successful have been doing it a long time, it makes sense for them to go on and purchase that piece of property, to go on and purchase that new piece of equipment. So it depends on the situation and, and we've had, had it, what we consider to be a successful farm operation run both directions. Shauna is the 4-H agent with the Cahoma County Extension Service. Her objective is to introduce opportunities to children that will enhance their knowledge of ag-related practices and teach them life skills that will benefit them as adults. This afternoon, um, I have uh, a school, St. Elizabeth um, Catholic School, and uh, we're starting a new program called Cloverbud uh, here in Coma County. And we're gonna meet with their um, kindergarten through second grade and um, tell them about that program a little bit and the different um, programs, different things that we'll have for them in the year. Even though the Taylors don't have a farm, they feel like they have a positive effect on agriculture. Everything revolves around agriculture in this area and, and for it to continue to thrive, people need to be educated uh, to what it means to this area. And, you know, when agriculture does well, everybody does well. When agriculture suffers, everybody suffers. Everything revolves around agriculture in this area. I don't care whether you're an attorney, a loan officer, a 4-H agent, uh, a contractor, doesn't matter. Everything in the Mississippi Delta revolves around agriculture, and when it does well, we all do well. Agriculture has been good to us, and it, and it continues to be. And so the more that we can give back, the more that, that our children can learn, the, the better our future is for everybody here in the Delta. The Taylors have one daughter, four-year-old Sarah Grace. Our next nominees are Joe and Marie Rogers from Itawamba County. The Rogers have a small row crop farm near Guntown. Most of the place that we use is family farm. We've got about 178 acres it's between pasture, timberland, and farmland, and we, re we rent additional 105 acres. This is the first year we grew beans. We've got about 25 acres of soybeans this year. We've got around 30 acres of corn. We take a portion of our corn that we harvest and use it to feed our cattle. We've got a cow-calf operation that we, we uh, crush our own feed and mix our own feed there. Joe also teaches agriculture at Mantachi High School. Teach forestry class and agri-science and help with the meats processing program there at school. We've got students that show cattle, do FFA contests, and they have SAEs where we go out on their farm 
help give them advice and help them with record keeping. And then we help them get awards for those kind of programs too. Our chapter is one of the, I think, most active in the state. We usually average around between juniors and seniors, a hundred, a little over a hundred members a year. We have a nature trail and it's been there for a long time there behind the school. It belongs to Mr. A.K. McFerrin. There's about 10 or 12 acres and he's just turned it over to let us use. Even when I was a student there at school, we had a nature trail and the students upkeep it. It's got about 30 plus trees labeled out there with common names, scientific names. We use them in class, botany class uses them. Marie is the Itawamba County 4-H agent. She oversees the community and project clubs, as well as providing school enrichment programs for students and adults. The Rogers believe that the most important thing they do is to educate the young people that they come in contact with about the importance of agriculture. First day of ag, you ask them, how many y'all live on a farm and it's less hands each year? So what we're doing, I think, is a very worthwhile and it's, it's, it's important. We've got too many people that go to the grocery store and they have no idea how the products got on the shelf. So somebody, I think, needs to step up and do the best they can to kind of let them know what farmers go through each day what kind of opportunities they can do in agriculture. One of the main things is we want to teach our son, just like we teach the kids that we deal with every day, we want to teach our son the importance of farming and, and the back, backbone that it is of America. I think everybody kind of do a little bit better job of telling that and getting that story out there. I'll never forget it's kind of like the commercials, the farm families of Mississippi. I think that's an eye opener for some people to see what the farmers are doing and how they're taking care of the, the products that everybody's using. I worked in research for a, a time at Mississippi State. When you lose research jobs in the agriculture related field, um, it affects not only those researchers and the, and the jobs that are directly related to that research, but it also affects the consumer. And um, we could educate, we could help better educate the consumers about where their food really comes from. Joe and Marie have one son, Bo, who just turned two. Our next nominees are William and Julie White from Octibaha County. We raise beef cattle out here and do our own hay production. We just run about 20 to 30 head, calve them out, sell the calves, and we're trying to scrunch it up to a calving season right now, so we're in the process of trying to improve it. William is the facilities coordinator for the research herd at Mississippi State University. We run a probably 170 head of cattle in the fall and about 100 head in the spring. We have three breeds of cattle. We have Hereford, Angus, and Charlays. And we mainly do research on those animals. Right now we're doing a project and we're feeding out heifers with whole cotton seed and seeing if that affects them or not like it does in bulls. We've got some genetic low marker and high marker research going on with the Angus. Julie is the County Extension Director for Octibaha County. I've actually been a County Director three years, but I've worked for the Extension Service for 12 years. I was a 4-H agent prior to this. I've served the, the clientele of the county, whether it's from working in your home garden or in your lawn, or if it's out working with the farmers, dealing with row crops or with any type of agriculture. My favorite part is getting out and actually working with the farmers and helping them to improve their facilities and their herds and just being with them and being able to socialize and learn from them too. The Whites feel like one of agriculture's biggest challenges is getting all aspects to come together as one voice. No matter how small or how large the farm is, no matter if it's organic or conventional, we would like to see agriculture come together as one voice because we think we're stronger as one than we are as separate entities. That includes all types of agriculture, no matter if you have the small home garden or if you have the large row crop farm or if you have anything in between. The biggest challenge is getting them to actually get in a room together would be the first challenge um, because they're so busy pointing fingers at each other that they don't really have time to listen to each other's side of the story um, and realize in the end that we are just all one agriculture commodity and one agriculture group. And you know, and for me as a county extension agent, um, I see that, that battle on a daily basis. And so it's something that I'm passionate about and would like to see happen. The Whites have two children, six-year-old Matthew and Morgan, who is five. That's one of our key things that we really enjoy is getting them involved with the farm. I enjoyed growing up on a farm getting to learn about the cattle, getting to learn about equipment, 
and I hope that they will take the time to learn and to appreciate the land that we have and to take care of the land that we have. Our next nominee is Jared Matthews. Jared is the facilities coordinator at the Brown Loam Experiment Station near Raymond. Brown Loam is a 1,750 acre research experiment station. It's owned by Mississippi State and we do uh, mainly our focus is beef cattle and then we have uh, experimental crops. The corn we raise here on the station, we raise some for production along with our standard, you know, the, the experiments that they have running. The corn we raise for production, we feed it to the cows, uh, so we eat all we can and then we sell the rest. Days at the experiment station can be pretty full. I try to get in uh, around seven, check my email to make sure there's no, you know, no issues that are on fire anybody's got. We'll hand out assignments for the day uh, because I've got student workers that come on different varied time schedules and then I've got five full-time personnel. It's sort of like the, the burning issues of the day or the week and then we have to incorporate that into research projects that are ongoing. Jared and his wife Margaret have a family farm in Yazoo County where they raise cattle. You know we have so many cows that we name all of them so uh, not necessarily something you want to try to make a living with but it, it, it's fun and it's good for the kids and we're, we're active in 4-H and things like that. Jared says that proper use of technology can be a valuable asset to a farmer. I tease people all the time. So I didn't know that tractors had cabs till I was 16 years old, you know. Later on in life, I worked for a larger operation and uh, we had a brand new 8330 John Deere with Green Star capabilities. You know, you, you just cock the steering wheel up and find the GPS mark and, and bam, the tractor took off through the field and did everything you needed to. And technology comes a long way, but there's a, there's, a, there's a fine line right there where technology can be too costly for what you need to do. Working in his capacity at Brown Loam gives Jared a real sense of accomplishment. Honestly, I'm pretty proud of my contributions to agriculture. I, I think uh, Mississippi State is, a, is sort of the flagship of agriculture, and especially in our state. We produce a lot of good information, and, and I play, a, I would say, a, a pretty large role in that as far as the fact that I manage one of the largest stations that Mississippi State has. You know, I like helping the little guy, so. That's where I'm, I sort of draw my pride from that. I love farming and I had uh, come off um, active duty military and I, uh, I knew instantaneously what I wanted to do. You know, I wanted to get back into agriculture. And so Mississippi State was gracious enough to uh, provide me this position down here. And uh, uh, we're hoping to do some good and great things in the future and, and sort of put it back on the map and uh, get some good information out there to, to the local people try to help as many people as we can. The Matthews have three children, Ridge, who is nine, Anna Claire, who is five, and Rome, who was just a newborn when this was shot, is now five months. Next, we have Jody and Heather Dolan from Jasper County. The Dolans raise cattle near Lewin. We got three cattle farms, two in Jasper and one in Smith. Uh, we got 165 head of mama cows, and uh, we usually keep about 25 head of heifers a year. Uh, we got one farm that's devoted to our heifers. We pull them and, and breed them. We're running seven Charley bulls, one Angus bull. We put our Angus bull on our heifers for low birth weight. Uh, we cut a lot of hay, too. We, uh, we sell a good bit of hay. We roll over 3,000 rolls of hay a year. We keep about 1,000 for ourselves. usually sell about 2,000. A lot out of the field, a lot to small farmers coming you know, straight out of the barn or something. Off the farm, Jody is a state livestock inspector, administering rules and regulations for various types of livestock, including horses, cattle, and poultry. I've got two sale barns a week. I do the market for them, and uh, I do a lot of traveling. I'm on call pretty much all the time. If we have an outbreak or disease, we try to go out and isolate it and, and before it gets widespread. You know, we try to eliminate it right off the bat. And it, we also deal with natural disasters. You know, we're, we have a ma emergency management team that you know, as far as large animals, if we have a hurricane or something break out, and we got livestock producers that's got, a, you know, dairies or something like that, and they need some assessments to get some fuel or, or whatever the case may be, hay feed to them, we'll go out and, uh, and try to get that uh, handled, you know, as quick as possible. Heather works for the state auditor's office. I do uh, financial audits, which consist of looking at the county's financial statements, determining if they're stated properly for that year. 
on a day-to-day -day basis, I come in contact with people that, are, that don't live on the farm, that aren't associated with farm life, and I think it's important to inform them of how we live our lives, even though we have jobs outside the farm, we still have regular lives like them, that farmers are not big commercial farms, they are regular people that work every day just like they do. The Dolans feel that one of the most important issues facing agriculture these days is educating the public about what goes on down on the farm. And we do a lot on our county farm bureau level on educating the public. We just recently had a uh, farm tour of our county farms, and trying to show some of our, our elected officials what we do, you know, for agriculture. But we've got to get our message out, and we're doing a pretty good job of it. But there's a plenty of room for improvement. You know, most people nowadays think their food comes off the shelf, but it doesn't. It takes a lot to get it there. The Dolans have one daughter, one-year-old Macy. Our final nominees this year are Brad and Brittany Jones from Stone County. The Joneses operate Bluff Creek Farms, a nearly 800 head stocker cattle operation in South Mississippi. We started out roughly five years ago uh, when I was beginning to work with Extension Service. Started out with about 40 acres and roughly 40, 50 head of cattle that first year. Uh, we've grown a little bit every year up until this year. We'll plant just under 300 acres of ryegrass and we'll run just under 800 head of cattle. Brittany is the language arts teacher at Sawmill School in Wiggins. I teach reading, so they read passages, they, they like to read, they like us to give them a lot of nonfiction, a lot of informational stuff, so anytime I can throw in agricultural related things, even fictional stories, to bring up questions about ag, things like that. I like to do that because they have so many questions. Even though we're kind of in a rural area, they still don't know a lot. Reading is a good subject to teach to kind of slide some of that agriculture in there. Brad is the 4-H and ag agent for the Extension Service in Stone County. He works with youth and adults on ag education and all aspects of 4-H. Through our programs and our clubs, we reach roughly 24, 2,500 youth in Stone County on a year in, year out basis. A lot of our programs dip into agriculture in some way if they're not based on agriculture. We have Farm Safety Day, Farm Day for our kindergartners, Environmental Day for our third graders. We, we have a school program for every grade, K through eighth, and we get into our high school on uh, through career days. When I'm there for a career day, I'm representing agriculture. I'm there representing an ag job. I discuss the aspects of extension and also farming and what we do there. He also works at the state fair, helping kids show their animals. I work in the ring as a ring steward to be sure the kids have a positive experience while they're showing their cattle. A lot of times we're dealing with eight and nine year olds and our younger kids, that's their first time in the ring. And when they're in the Mississippi Coliseum or they're in the judging arena on the state fairgrounds, that's a big place. And we have kids that get nervous, cattle that get nervous. We work with them to be sure they understand where they're supposed to be as the judges look at their cattle and be sure if they're having trouble holding that animal, to be sure they, that we, we get them as positive an experience as we can get so they want to come back and do it again. Brittany says she is in a unique position to explain to her students that everything they see and hear about agriculture isn't always accurate. I think the, the overall outlook that some people have on um, certain things just like animal welfare, I know my kids when I bring up anything like that, they, they want to get on a tangent about, you know, well, these, these commercials that they see on TV or, you know, we have to stop and discuss that. I, I love to discuss that with them. And we actually have a whole unit called Tools of Persuasion where we look at media and how they, that affects um, different people's perspective on issues. And I, I always try to focus on that issue. I think that's a big one, especially for these kids because they're so easily influenced by the media. They don't have any other force telling them, hey, it's really not like that. So I, I try to get in there and, and give them our side of the story, too. The Joneses have two children, Tyler, who is four, and newborn Lauren Bree, who hadn't made her appearance yet when we visited. And those are the nominees for the 2012 Young Farmers and Ranchers Excellence in Agriculture Award. We are, uh, we are very proud of the prize package we've put together for this and we'd like to recognize our sponsors who unfortunately were not able to be here with us this evening. Um, Mr. Joe Heyman, who is the CEO of Southern Ag Credit, he uh, 
sponsored the, uh, the, new, the big grasshopper lawnmower, zero turn lawnmower you, you may have seen out in the hall. And Mr. Henry Hamill uh, with Mississippi Farm Bureau Insurance Sales Department who uh, provided the 65 quart Yeti ice chests for each of the regional winners. Um, the state winner will also receive an expense paid trip to the American Farm Bureau meeting in Nashville this year uh, to compete in the National Young Farmers and Ranchers Excellence in Agriculture Award. Your 2012 Mississippi Farm Bureau Young Farmers and Ranchers Excellent in Agriculture winners are William and Julie White of Region 4. I don't know what to say. This is a big shock for me because we had some very stiff competition. But uh, I would like to thank, number one, God for all he's done for me. And, and thank my family and my parents and her parents for supporting us for all that they do. And for Farm Bureau for giving us all the opportunities that we've had. So thank y'all.